friends welcome to all our tutor i am sanjay so this is really exciting to know that in this video we'll see a complete concept to create node apis using mysql database driver so this will be a complete step by step course to create node apis using mysql all operations like create a data read a data update data and delete data Right now, if you have some hesitation about creating Node APIs, so I am 100% sure after watching this video, after implementing all the concepts of this video to your application, you will have the complete confidence to create Node APIs using MySQL Database Driver. Because this is a step-by-step -step course where we will see about each aspect to create Node APIs. We have one more request, please subscribe to this channel so that we can create such amazing videos, amazing content free for you. So if I back to slide, so here as I told you that this is a complete course, so here we have a complete playlist plan. So in this course we'll start from scratch, it means a project setup, inside that setup we'll see the concept of package.json file, all about the dependencies of node, what we install to create node APIs. Then we create a database and inside that database we'll have a table called employees and inside that table we'll have some number of columns like id, name, email, gender and mobile. Then we configure all about application with basic settings of express. And once we complete all about the basic settings of application then we connect with the database. And once our application will be connected with the database then we go and create our node APIs. So inside APIs list, we'll see the complete concept of add employee API. By the help of this API, we'll create some employee and save to our employees table. Then we see the concept of get all employee API. It means all the employees what we have inside our database will list all those data from our API. Next we have an API by the help of that, we'll read a single specific information of an employee. Then we have update employee API and finally we'll see the concept of delete employee API. So this course is a complete concept to create node APIs with each aspect, each standard using MySQL database driver. Now let's proceed all about with the APIs development. So first we'll start from project setup. So I will go inside folder structure. We are inside this var www.htmlyt and node APIs. Currently, this folder is empty. So what I will do, I will open this setup into my terminal. And let's zoom in. If I type ls, so we can see it is totally empty. Now the first file will create called package.json. Package.json file is very important because by the help of this file, we can track all the dependencies. It means no dependencies what we have inside our application. So what we can do here to create package.json, we have two options. Either we can type npm in it and if I press enter, it will ask a series of questions. We need to provide some input and by following those input, it will create a package.json file. But I want to generate package.json file with default values. So if we want to consider default values simple npm in it and if I type hyphen y or minus y then by default it will create package.json with the default values. Press enter. Now we can see that this is all about our package.json file view. We have a single object and inside this object here we have some properties called name, version, description, main, scripts, keyword, author and license. So this is all about with the default values. Now if I go into folder structure, so we can see that right now inside this node APIs, here we have our single package.json file. So what we can do, I will open this setup into my VS Code editor. Now successfully, I have opened that setup into my VS Code. So inside this setup, we have only the single file. Now in the next step, what we have to do, we need to install all the needed packages. So here we have Express, MySQL, Body Parser and Nodemon. So these are the node packages that we need to install inside this project setup. So first I will open this package.json. We can see we don't have any package but once we install these packages automatically here we'll see one more extra object and inside that object we'll have all the dependencies values. 
So I will go inside Prozac terminal. Let's say NPM or if I go into our more packages list. So here we have Express, MySQL, Body Parser and Nodemon. So let's discuss one by one and why we need these packages. So first this is all about Express. It's a web application framework of a node application that we need inside our application to create APIs. Then we have MySQL. Obviously, we are using MySQL database driver. So this package we need for this API development. Then we have body parser. So in our host APIs, when we pass our data inside body, so to read all the data inside API, we want a body parser. And here we have Nodemon. It provides a environment by the help of that automatically it listen our changes of application and restart our web server. So let's install these packages inside node application. So to install these packages if I open a new tab. So for example if we want to install express and one more thing before installing all these packages if I go to browser just go inside this npmjs.com which is the official website of node packages and here if I search the package called express if I press enter and here we can see that express exact match so if I click on this package so now we will see all about the documentation of using express so inside right hand side we can see all about the installation command that is npm i stands for install and express so if I copy this command, let's go to slide here. So to install express, we want this command to be executed. That is npm i and express. Now next here we have mysql. So if I go again here and search for mysql2, just click on search button. So if I do so, so here we can see this is our second package, exact match. Let's click on that. So it will open all about the documentation of mysql2. Again, we can see here, this is the command to install MySQL2. So let's copy. If I go into our installation list, so MySQL2 and this is the command. Let's go and search for body parser. So if I go into the search bar and type body hyphen parser, press enter. Now it will open exact match. Click on it. Again, we have the documentation and this is all about npm i body parser. I will copy, go here. So this is all about body parser. And here's the command. And finally, we need for nodemon. So if I go and search nodemon, if I again press enter, exact match, click on it. And hopefully we'll see all about the command. So if I copy this npm install nodemon, Let's go here and this is all about nodemon. So we want to execute four different commands inside our Prozac terminal to install four dependencies. So now we want to install these packages into single line command. So what we have to do npm instead of typing all these four commands separately, we want to install by using a single command to so npm i express this is our first package name space mysql2 second package name space body parser body parser this is our third package space and nodemon so if i copy this command and press enter inside this project terminal so automatically it will install all these packages by a single command let's press enter now we can see that installation started and we can see that successfully npm has added 108 packages inside this node application. Let's go inside our editor. Now we can see that here inside this project folder, here we have node modules which contains all about the core folders and files of all the dependencies what we had installed inside this setup. Now next, if I go into our checklist, so successfully this step now completed. Let's talk about all database table setup. So here, first we need to create a database and inside that database we need to create a table called employees. So I will go inside my PHMI admin and here inside this I will click on databases tab. Let's create a database. So I will call it as yt underscore node underscore apis 
or before that I will add MySQL. So let's copy database name, click on create button. So successfully now we have created a database. Now in this database we want a table called employees and inside that employees table we want ID, name, email, gender and mobile. So what we can do, I will go here inside this UI. Here we have the create table layout. Now we want to pass the table name so we have the table name as employees. I will copy, pass it here. Next we want the number of columns equals to 5. I will pass here 5, click on go button. Now next I will pass the column name so id, name, email, next we have gender and mobile. So this is all about the first column where we are going to provide the column names. Now next here we have the second column where we will put our data type of each column. So id it is of int type length equals to 5, name this column is going to contain string values so from this drop down I will select varchar let's say 100 characters it is of maximum length email address varchar let's say 80 characters of maximum length gender I will select enum type and if we select enum type it means we need to provide a set of data so I will go and click on this edit enum forward slash set values and now inside this pop-up we need to provide some values so i'll provide the first value as male female and other let's close or remove this last option so inside this gender here we have the enum type and inside this enum type here we have the set of values like male female and other so it means that when we enter any value inside this gender field the value will be of any key of this set if we provide value other than this value like other than this value so automatically it will not accept that and finally here we have mobile number so let's say it is also going to contain a varchar and maximum length let's say 30 characters and i will go inside this null checkbox let's say the gender column is going to contain null value as well and mobile number as well and for this index column means for id i will go inside this ai it means auto increment click on this checkbox and from this index name i will select primary key so successfully we can see that these are the attributes of id column and here we have name and email these are required parameters because these columns will not going to contain any null value but apart from these columns here we have gender and mobile which is optional it means if you pass value it will insert if you don't pass any value automatically null value will be inserted so let's click on save button so successfully this is all about the table structure that we have created inside this database so here we have the second step now completed now let's see and start all about application basic settings so for that i will go inside editor let's create a file that will be the main application file entry file so i will create a file called app.js at application root and one more thing once we create this file and decided that this will be our main entry file so we need to go inside this package.json and here we have a key called main and inside this main here we have the value as index.js so by default this package.json have the main entry file with the name called index.js but we have decided to name that file into app.js so let's change it to app.js all we have done with this package.json now let's go inside this app.js and we need to write the basic code of express where we'll create a basic route that is welcome page route so here first let's say const app equals to require and here express automatically this is coming into hint section because we have installed this package to this node application so once we use this const app here next let's define our port it means application port from here we'll listen this application so let's say that i want to listen this application at 8087 port and finally let's say const app equals to and here we have again app so let's change it to express 
So app equals to express. Now here we have created an instance of express and finally let's app dot listen. We need to first pass all about the port value function and inside this function console.log let's say application is started now let's create a welcome page route so here app.get welcome page it means forward slash let's define a callback function with request parameter and response And here, let's say console.log welcome to node APIs with MySQL. So successfully, this is our basic setting of app.js file or of this application. So if I save all these changes, let's execute this application into browser. So I will go inside project terminal. So as we know that inside this application, we have installed Nodemon package. So what we can do here, if I execute means without Nodemon, so this will be something like node app.js. If I press enter, now we can see that application has started. But if we do any changes to these files, this is not going to automatically listen. We need to kill the server and again restart means again needs to restart. But here we had installed Nodemon. So the benefit of Nodemon is that when we do any changes inside application, automatically it listens those changes and restart our web server. So here, instead of calling using Node, I will call our application using Nodemon. So here, simple when you type called nodemon, when we press enter, this nodemon is going to call all about package.json and here we have app.js which starts our application automatically. But here, instead of using nodemon directly, I will call using npx and type nodemon. So here, what is the meaning of npx? npx stands for node package execute. So here, this is a package as we know this is a node package so i am going to execute this package using npx so if i press enter now we can see that here we have we can see that node one is started our application server application started so if i go to browser and let's type localhost and type colon our application port that is 8087 so if i press enter go to terminal now we can see welcome to node apis with mysql so successfully, we have created a basic setting application where we executed this application using Nodemon. But instead of logging all the messages inside this console, we want a proper response right here inside this browser. So what we can do here instead of console.log, let's remove that. I will use this response here. So response.json. Let's pass an object here. Let's say status equals to 1. Alice a message welcome to Node.js with MySQL APIs. So if I save all these changes, let's go project terminal. Now we can see that automatically Nodemon listen all the changes and restarted our web server. So if I go here and now we can see that this is all about our application URL called localhost 8087 port and now we can see our response that is status equals to 1 and message equals to welcome to Node.js with MySQL APIs. So successfully we have configured a basic application with the basic settings. And finally inside this basic settings we want few more settings that is all about that here we have used the concept of function but instead of using this function we want to use arrow function so simple just remove this function keyword and after this parenthesis it means parenthesis of function i will put arrow operator now the function based concept is converted into arrow function again if i go inside here let's remove this function keyword after this parenthesis just put a arrow operator so successfully, now we have updated our basic settings. In the next, I will create a file inside this application with name called routes.js. 
It means we want to create a route module and inside that module we'll separate all the routes that we create inside this node APIs. Because as we know that inside this APIs list we want all these routes, it means if we write all these routes into this common file called app.js then it is too much complicated to read all the code. So we want neat and clean a uh, manageable code. So what we can do here, I will go inside this project setup. Let's create one more file with name called routes.js. Inside node application, every JavaScript file is termed as module. So here it's route module. Now go inside routes.js and here what we can do here, let's say const express equals to require and express const let's say router equals to express express it means this is express dot router and here I will go inside this app.js file let's cut this code it means welcome page route I will go inside this routes module put it here and instead of calling using app because this app not exists inside this module so I will use this router and finally go at the last and here let's say module dot exports dot exports equals to router and finally we will include this routes module into this app module so here let's say const app routes equals to require and we want to include this route module from this project application which is at root so here dot forward slash it means inside this current directory i want this routes module and finally after adding or including this module inside this app module here app dot use forward slash and here app routes so successfully we have separated all the application routes and here this is routes module. So if I save all these changes, if I go here and here we have some error and this error means that we are not successfully importing all the routes. So let's go inside this routes module and here ok module.exports. So if we save all these changes go inside terminal now we can see that application started so if i go and reload now we can see that successfully our landing page is now working so here we have two module this is app module which is the main module file and here we have routes module where we can separate all the application routes so if i go into our checklist so successfully the basic settings what we need now completed now next we'll see the concept of database connectivity so if i go inside our project editor so to create database connection and to store database connection string values let's create a separate file let's call it as database.js so this is database module so const mysql equals to require we have installed mysql2 So here by using this mysql we'll call some means methods by the help of those methods we'll make connectivity with our database. So mysql dot create connection and inside this method we need to pass an object here and inside this object we'll have some properties by the help of that we need to provide our connection string values. So first we'll have host so obviously we are using local host so here inside double quotes localhost next we have the username so user in my case my php admin the username is admin and here password in my case password is admin at the rate one two three in your case these details may be different now next i need to pass database name so here we have database key colon so if I go into our PHMA admin, this is our database name. So I will copy. Let's copy. So it is yt underscore node underscore mysql underscore APIs. So successfully, this is all about that how to create a MySQL connection. Let's store inside a variable. 
So let's call it as MySQL connection. And finally, I will copy this variable. Go here, let's say MySQL dot connect. By the help of this method, we can check that if this application is connected with that database or not. So here, let's pass error variable. So in case any error, we are using arrow function. So here if error, so in this case, let's say console.log failed to connect with database and after this if block, let's define else block, it means successfully we are now connected with the database so console.log successfully database connected Let's save these changes and we want to export this MySQL to other modules so that once we create this connection with the database, then hopefully inside our routes module, we'll use that connection to create our APIs. Because by the help of this connection, we want to save our data, list any data, update data and delete data. So what we can do here and first, let's change from where to const. Once we do, let's copy this MySQL connection. I will go here, let's say module dot exports equals to MySQL connection. Let's go inside this routes module and I will import this database module inside this routes module. So const let's say connection equals to require and inside this require, inside this double quotes dot forward slash it means from current directory we want to include this database module and once it is, this database successfully will be connected then by the help of this connection variable inside this file inside this routes module we want to operate with each function with mysql employees table let's save all these changes and see that what is going to see inside console so let's do any mistake for example Let's do any mistake inside this username. If I save this file, now this module is added inside this routes module and this route module is loading inside this app module. So if I go inside terminal, now here we can see that failed to connect with database. Obviously, our username what we have used is invalid. So that's why it is failed to connect with the database. But once we do all the changes, it's admin. Once we save, automatically this server will be restarted and we'll see the message call successfully database connected. Let's save all application changes with correct details. Go inside terminal. Now we can see that successfully database connected. So this is all about database connectivity inside our application. So it is also done. Now we need to focus on the core section of this complete course is all about APIs development. So we will first see all about the concept of add employee API. So as we know that to create any employee, we want data like name, email, gender and mobile. Because this is the ID column which is auto increment, it means whenever we do any insertion inside employees table, this ID automatically will be generated. So we want to consider only four values like name, email, gender and mobile. So here we'll see the first concept of MySQL query and that is all about insert command. So let's go inside our project editor. I will go inside this routes module. Let's close this database module package.json and here let's create our first route to create or let's say add employee API and this API we hit using post request type and we need to pass data like name, email, gender and mobile. So here I will use router dot post because we want to post our data to this API to save inside our employees table. So post forward slash and I want to call it as add hyphen employee. Let's define a callback function. So instead of function based concept, I will use arrow function. So parenthesis request response arrow operator. And here we have curly pairs. 
Now here, we'll use the concept of connection variable and by the help of connection, we'll call query method. So connection dot query and inside this query, we need to write our MySQL query. By the help of that, we'll insert our data inside employees table. So inside double quotes, insert into, next we need to pass the table name. So we have employees parenthesis and inside this parenthesis we need to pass our column names so we want values inside name field name field email field let's go inside our database table so we want name email gender and mobile so after email we'll have gender and mobile then we have the values keyword and inside values keyword means next we need to define another parenthesis so we want four different values to create employees so question mark comma question mark comma question mark comma and question mark it means we want four values so here we'll have four placeholders and these placeholders will be replaced from the values what we receive from request body so here let's type console.log console.log and for the time being if i write request.body let's say return false if i comment this line of code save these changes i will open postman tool so successfully i have opened postman so i will go here and before that let's copy our project URL. so localhost 8087 ip means port value Go inside Postman, inside this address bar, this is our project URL. From this drop down, I will select Post Request Type. And here, after forward slash, I will pass add hyphen employee because this is our API route. So if I go here and inside this body, let's first pass all about headers. So accept. If I pass application JSON and also content type because we are passing a JSON data. So it is also application JSON. Just go inside body tab, select raw here. Inside this we can see application JSON automatically selected because here we have passed content type. So once we go here, let's create an object and we want to pass name, email, gender and mobile. So let's pass values. So colon, if I pass the first employee, email value something a dummy value for gender and for mobile number so here we are passing all this data inside request body to this api so let's click on send button so once we click on the send button we can see that right here inside this callback function we are consoling all the data inside our project terminal so if i go here we can see that let's Close this development server and restart one more time. Application started, connect with the database. So let's click on the send button and it is loading. But once we go inside project terminal and here we can see undefined. And I think that this is because actually we have installed one more package that is body parser. And so far we didn't use that. So what we can do here, if I go inside this app.js file, which is the main module and let's import that. So const body parser equals to require and I will add here that is body hyphen parser. This is the package by the help of that we can read all about the body parameters and here let's app dot use it's a body parser dot json method. Save these changes application restarted now let's click again on the send button loading but if we go inside project terminal now we can see all the data so successfully it is working so go inside routes module let's remove this console.log and return false instead i'll go and uncomment this line so connection dot query here we have insert a statement values and placeholders now inside the second value of this query method, we need to pass all the values what we're receiving in place of these placeholders. So I will pass an array and inside this array, we want to pass four different values. So first placeholder for the name value. So we want name 
so request dot body dot name so here this is all about request body so if we want to get this name so request dot body dot name next we have the same for this email value so request dot body dot email request dot body dot gender request dot body and dot and finally we have mobile let's go and check one more time it is mobile so here we have the second object it means second value of this query method here we have passed four different values for these placeholders and automatically once we go and run this api this query will be compiled with all these values now inside this third value we need to pass a callback function with error and success or we need to call it as data so here let's say if error console.log and before that here we have some spelling mistake or syntax error so console.log and let's say fail to execute insert statement let's go inside else block here let's say response dot json i will pass an object status equals to true message let's say employee saved successfully and also instead of this console.log let's create a proper json response so response dot json status equals to false and message let's say fail to create and employ so successfully this is all about the concept of add employee let's save all these changes if i go inside project terminal everything is okay application restarted so if i go here and let's pass all this data inside this api call click on send button we can see employee saved successfully so we are getting all the response of this else block it means data saved so to confirm if I go inside database, let's click on browse button. Now we can see that our first employee, first entry night done inside this employees table. Let's create some more employees again back to postman and here. This is our second employee. Click on send button, employee saved. If I go and click on browse button, now we are getting our second employee. One more check we can add here inside our code is that once we create an employee with this email, so in the second entry with that same email address, we want to show a message that is email already exists. So this is the check actually we can add inside this code. So what we can do here before running this insert command here, let's say connection dot query let's say select all from employee stable employee stable where email equals to quotation mark it means placeholder inside this second value i will pass an array let's say request dot body dot email inside third value of this query method let's pass a callback function so error and data error operator just go inside this callback function so if error here let's response dot json status equals to false message failed to execute query but once we go inside this else block on the basis of this data let's if data it means employee exist with this email value otherwise if you go inside this else block employee does not exist or employee not found so the concept of insert method or insert query this logic will go inside this else block
just cut all the code, go inside this else block and pasting it here. And one more thing, so before adding conditions on the base of this data, first I will go and let's say console.log and data. Let's see that what we are getting inside this data variable returns equals to false. Save these changes. Let's go here and server is stopped. So let's go and start our server one more time. Started. So if I go inside our postman, let's click the same API with all these details. Click on send button and loading. But once we go inside Prozac terminal, now we can see that here we are getting an array. And inside this array, we have a single object. And this is the object actually what we are getting by the help of this email value. So what we can do here, we can add a checkpoint on the base of this data. So if data dot length greater than zero, it means we have any object inside our array. So if this is valid, let's go inside this if log so response dot json status equals to false message equals to employee already exist save these changes all we have done if i go inside postman we are passing the same data let's click on send button employee already exist but if i do any changes If I do any changes, this is a new email value which does not exist inside our database. Click on send button, employee saved successfully. If I go here, let's click on browse button, we are getting our third employee. But once we click again on the send button with the same email value, employee already exists. So successfully, the concept of email check what we have added inside this add employee API now working successfully. So inside this checklist, now we have completed this all about add employee API. Now let's see again the concept of get all employee API. So here what we'll do, simple, we need to create an API and inside that API, we need to list all the employees what we have inside our database. So let's go inside our project editor, let's collapse and here list all employee. And this API will hit using get request type. So router, I will use get method for slash let's say list hyphen employee request response arrow function and inside the curly pairs, let's say connection dot query inside this first value, let's say select all from table name called employees. Inside the second value, we need to pass our callback function so error and data error function and our curly pairs. So here let's say if error it means we, if we have any error while execution of this command. So let's say response response.json status equals to false and message let's say fail to execute query let's go inside this else block it means we have some data inside this data variable so as we know that inside this data variable we'll get an array so here let's say if data dot length greater than zero it means we have data data Otherwise, in case of no data, let's response dot JSON status equals to false and message, let's say no employee found. But once we get data, let's go inside this if block response dot JSON status equals to true message equals to employees found and inside let's say employees key employees key or we can we may call it as users users equals to data so successfully if we save all these changes 
Let's go inside Postman. I will copy this project URL, open a new tab, select get from this drop down and instead of calling add employee, this time we will call list hyphen employee. So I will remove the existing URL and list employee. Let's go inside headers. Let's accept application JSON. Once we pass this header, just click on send button. Now we can see that status equals to true, message equals to employees found and here we have users key where we have all the employees what we saved inside our table. So successfully this is all about the concept of get all employee API. It is also completed. Now next we'll see the concept of get single employee API. So while calling this API, it means we need to pass employee ID into URL. So first, we need to read the employee ID from URL. We need to check inside database that this employee exists or not. If it exists, then we need to return all about the response of that. Otherwise, means in case of error, in case of no existence, the message will be something like no employee found with that employee ID. So let's go inside project editor. Here. Let's say single employee data API and this API also we hit using get request type so router dot router dot get forward slash let's say single hyphen employee and we want to read employee id from url so forward slash we need to create a placeholder and inside that placeholder we need to pass employee id so after forward slash colon and id this id is a placeholder and by the help of this placeholder we need to read the employee id value now next i will to define a callback function so request response arrow function and curly pairs so connection dot query this url value we can get let's say where or we may define let employee id equals to request dot params dot id here inside this query method let's say select all from employees table where id equals to placeholder Inside second value, pass an array here and it will be employee ID. Next, we have the callback function error and data. Now, next, I will go here. Let's say if error response dot JSON status equals to false and message equals to failed to execute query let's go inside else block and on the basis of this data check so data dot length dot length greater than zero it means we have some data so in that case response or json status equals to true and message equals to employee found and let's say user it means employee information inside this data otherwise we need to go inside else block employee does not exist with that employee id so response dot json status equals to false and message no employee found with employee id so successfully this is all about the concept to get single employee information Save these changes. I will copy or before that, let's go inside Postman. I will copy this project URL, open a new tab, pasting it here, select get here, go to headers, accept. I will pass application JSON and inside this URL, first I need to change all about the URL here. So single hyphen employee, single hyphen employee and while calling this api we need to pass employee id so here we can see employee id equals to one three and four again if i go into our table so employee id equals to one three and four so once we pass here let's say 10 number 10 number employee id does not exist so let's click on send button we can see no employee found 
with employee ID. But once we pass here the fourth value and this fourth number employee ID exists, click on send button. Now you can see employee found and this is all about the employee data. So successfully, we have completed one more API from our checklist and this is all about get single employee API. It is also completed. Now next we need to see the concept of update employee API. So while calling this update employee API, we need to first pass all about the employee ID and next updated data. So first we need to read employee ID from URL. We need to check inside our database that if employee exists, if it exists, then we need to overwrite or replace the existing values with updated values of request body. Let's go inside project editor. Let's collapse that and I will create one more route that is all about update employee and this API will call using put request type. So router dot put method forward slash update hyphen employee request response arrow function curly pairs go inside that so first as we know that inside ul also will have the employee id so colon id will be the placeholder so let employee id equals to request dot params dot id by the help of this code or from existing code of the single employee api by the help of this code actually we are reading the id value what we are passing while calling this API. So request.params.id, this ID is the placeholder what we have specified here. So now next let's say connection dot query. First we need to check all about this existence of this employee ID. So select all from table name called employees where ID equals to question mark placeholder array. So here it will be employee ID. So error data and first I will add the checkpoint let's first semicolon here so if error response dot json status equals to false message equals to failed to execute query Let's go inside this else block and I will add the checkpoint that is data.length greater than zero. It means employee exists. Go inside this else block. Response dot JSON status equals to false message equals to no employee found. Let's go inside this if block, it means employee exist. So in this case, we want to actually update the existing informations and the updated informations we get from request body. So here let's say name equals to request.body.name. This is actually we are getting the updated values from request body. Let's define let name equals to. Next we have email equals to request body or instead of defining variables let's say connection dot query here let's say update table name called employees set column name that is name equals to placeholder email equals to placeholder this is all about the update query of mysql so update table name set name equals to this is updated value email equals to updated value gender equals to placeholder and mobile equals to placeholder and finally we need to put where condition so where id equals to placeholder so this is employee id what we are getting from url and all these placeholders value will get from request body so inside second value of this query method here let's request dot body dot name request dot body dot email request dot body dot gender request dot body dot mobile and finally for employee id it will be employee id 
So this is all about the values and here we are replacing with this placeholder to execute this MySQL query. Here inside this third value of this query method, error and data. So let's say if error response.json status equals to false and message let's say failed to execute query let's go inside this else block and here we get all about the response it means data updated so response dot json status equals to true and message equals to employee updated successfully save all these changes if i go into a postman let's copy our api url pasting it here this time i need to select call put request type and here this is update hyphen employee so just copy api url and instead of single employee update employee if i pass 100 number id which does not exist but i need to go inside headers and it's accept accept application json go inside body raw and before that if you're passing 100 number id click on send button no employee found now if we want to update the existing information let's say for this third number employee i will pass three here that is employee id go again inside headers let's say content type application json go inside body raw automatically this is selected because we have passed header content type let's say name email mobile and gender let's pass value here so we want to update this third number employee so this time we want the name something like this email underscore updated at the gmail.com mobile number this is our updated value but in some case let's say we don't want to update this gender field simply remove from here also from this code I don't want to update the gender value so I'll remove this gender here. So we want to update only name, email and mobile. So inside the second value of this query method also we don't need this gender. So here update employees set name equals to placeholder, email equals to placeholder, mobile equals to placeholder, where id equals to placeholder. So here we have one two three and four placeholders and inside this array here we have four different values save all these changes everything is okay inside console go here now let's click on send button with this third number employee with this update employee api employee updated successfully if i go here click on browse button now we can see that our third number employee successfully updated if I go into a checklist, so successfully, this fourth number API also completed. And finally, we'll see the concept of delete employee API. So in this API concept, we need to pa first pass all about employee ID into URL. So we need to check that that employee ID exists inside our database. If it exists, then we need to delete that. Let's go inside project editor. I will collapse that. So here, let's say delete employee and this API we hit using delete request method. So router dot delete here, let's say delete hyphen employee request response arrow function and curly pairs. So here, let's say first, I want to accept all about employee ID from URL. So ID, let's say let employee id equals to request dot params dot id so connection dot query first we check all about employee existence so select all from employees table where id equals to placeholder 
inside the second value we need to pass an array let's say request dot body not body this is employee id callback function so error and data so if error go inside this error block response dot json status equals to false and message equals to fail to execute query i'll go inside this else block it's the if data dot length greater than zero it means we have our employee entry inside our table so it exists otherwise go inside this else block let's copy this json response pasting it here and in this case no employee found let's go inside this if block so here again i will use connection dot query method and this time i need to execute my sql delete query so delete from table name called employees where id equals to placeholder and one more thing before executing update query and delete query of mysql please make sure about where condition because it is very important to check if it is not checked again and again so after execution of these queries data will be affected inside our database and if we provide some wrong values inside where condition our data will be lost from database and in that case we don't have any access to roll back all the values so please make sure before executing the sensitive queries of update and delete so here here we have passed our placeholder that is id so inside this array we are getting this employee id from url and inside this callback function let's say error and data next go here let's say if error response or json just go inside that status equals to false and message equals to failed to execute query i will go inside this else block and here let's response dot json status equals to true and message equals to employee deleted successfully so finally this is all about the complete concept of delete mysql query and this is all about the concept of delete employee api here we have first check all about the existence if it exists then here we are deleting that save all these changes go inside postman copy this api url pasting it here this time we'll call delete hyphen employee and let's pass 300 employee id and one more thing we need to select delete from here go to headers accept application json and inside this employee id we are passing 300 which does not exist inside our table click on send button no employee found but if we pass let's say value equals to 4 which exists for here click on send button employee deleted once we delete go here click on browse button now we can see that fourth number employee successfully deleted so if i go to our checklist so finally we have seen the complete concept of node.js with the mysql CRUD apis step by step to create node apis in a very interesting way so this is a complete step-by-step -step course guys once you follow and implement all the cases and concept what we have seen during this video to your application so i'm 100 percent sure you will create node apis into a very too much easier way so at summary of this video i would like to tell that if you want to learn node apis using mysql please don't escape any section of this video because every section of this video is too much interesting and see a new concept of node api so please follow this video and implement all the cases all the checks all the concept of this video to your application to create node apis from scratch
and also you can feel that this video is taking too much effort from our side to deliver the exact information what you need to learn all about node APIs with MySQL. So please like this video, provide a comment and subscribe to this channel. And one more thing, I will drop the source code means after uploading to GitHub, I will drop the link into this description of this video. So if you want all the source code of this project, of this course, simple, go and download from description link. So please like this video, comment and provide a subscription to this channel. So we'll meet into the next amazing video. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.